Hi, I'm Zach Distel, curator for the Sons of the American Revolution. During the winter months, we all like to cook more inside and maybe be close to a fire if possible. So we are pulling out some of our cooking implements here in the SIR collection, take a closer look at them. Over here to my right, this is a standing broiler, which is also sometimes called a Scottish broiler. This would be stood like this and it is adjustable so you can uh, pick how close you want your food to be to the fire. Uh, but this front face here would be faced towards uh, the burning embers and you could lay anything on here from fish to meat, bread, and it would just be used to do that you know, hot outside toasting or broiling. This is likely an American made example. You can see the craftsperson took great pride in their work. Uh, and this would be a very welcome addition to a colonial or Revolutionary War era home. Here, next, this is a wafer iron, not a waffle iron, but a wafer iron. And this one on the inside here, it's written in reverse so that when you make the wafer, it would come out correctly, but it is actually dated 1767 and it has some initials. These were very popular wedding gifts during the colonial and revolutionary war era. Uh, you can see there's a design in here. You would pour a, uh, a thin batter in there and you would close this and stick it into the fire and it would cook it fairly quickly and you would be left with a wafer about the consistency or thickness of an ice cream cone. Now these would be served for desserts and actually during uh, the colonial era they actually made what were proto ice cream cones. They would roll these wafers up and they would stick uh, preserves or fruit in there, jellies and sometimes whipped cream and these would be served for desserts. Next in the middle here, this is a uh, actually Revolutionary War attributed camp stove or brazier. You can see the lid comes off here and there is a rudimentary griddle in here with these holes. So this is something that would be used by uh, a small group of men. Uh, you could use it for cooking. And the idea is that it's enclosed so you don't need as much fuel. You wouldn't have to build a big roaring fire to cook something. So you could cook a piece of meat on here. Alternatively, if you're in a tent or uh, if you're in winter encampment and you're in a small cabin, this could be used for heating. Uh, these were very popular uh, with the Revolutionary War soldiers uh, on both sides of the conflict. Uh, and so they could be used for cooking, heating, they're also lightweight and transportable. Next over here, we actually have a bread toaster. During the colonial and Revolutionary War era, bread was not made every day, so you didn't always have fresh bread. Uh, so they also like to toast it just like we do today. So you would slice your bread and you would place it in here. And you have this long handle so you can reach it out into the fireplace, get it close to the heat source. You're gonna toast one side of the bread and you could actually, you, you could actually use uh, the toe of your foot or a long, maybe a wooden spoon or something, you could reach out and just spin that around, toast the other side of your piece of bread. Finally over here, this is what's called a spider skillet. Uh, it gets that name from these long legs. So just like skillets today that we use, this would be uh, for sauteing or perhaps pan frying uh, a piece of meat, but it has these long legs. And this is again, because you're cooking on an open fireplace. So you don't want your pan sitting or your skillet sitting directly down in the coals. It's gonna get far too hot and you're not gonna be able to control the heat going uh, into the food so it has these longer legs so you could rake some coals out from your fireplace onto the hearth and then you could place this over top of those so you could um, have control over that temperature alternatively these have also been found in archaeological digs of revolution war encampments these were great for if you do have to cook over an open fire again you're going to be able to control that temperature a little bit it's kind of a, a one uh, one piece cooking unit for whatever you're going to be preparing if you are cooking in camp.